Hey guys and welcome back. In today's video we're going to cut out all the talking. We're going to get straight to the drills to help you get rid of the flips. It's going to be a progression drill and we're going to start out with just the left hand. And what I recommend doing is taking out a three iron or four iron, whatever the lowest lofted iron you have in your, your set is. And we're going to start out with just the left hand here. And what I want you to do is I want us to start rolling some balls on the ground. And the way we're going to do this, we're going to de-loft the club so much. If you look at the loft that's on the face, normally my four iron would have 25, six degrees, somewhere in that ballpark. I'm gonna turn it down. I'm gonna have enough forward shaft lean at impact to where it has zero degrees of loft. I've taken all the loft off the face here and I'm gonna go ahead and really bow my left wrist as, to do this. So you notice my hips have to open up a little bit. My chest is gonna be a little bit open or my, my shirt buttons are gonna be a little bit open. But because my left arm is protracted across my body, it's gonna give the appearance that my shoulders are pretty square. But if I do that, I can take all the loft off the club and I'm just gonna be able to simply roll some balls across the ground. So there, there was no loft and it never got up in the air at all. What I don't wanna do is to start to hit these shots and get them to go even if they're a foot or two up in the air like that. So that ball, I got a little bit of scooping with my wrist, this broke down and the ball only went a couple feet in the air but I want to completely keep it on the ground the entire time. So I'm going to probably take, you know, of a range bucket, I'm going to make 20 or 30 swings where I'm just letting these balls roll across the ground. Maybe you have to hit 10 or 15 shots until I get comfortable with that. Now the, hard, the part that I find that's hard for most players is to get what feels like a pretty weak position to them. So if I'm de-lofting this club, my left wrist needs to bow a little bit. And what's going to happen there, these muscles that are on the inside of my, my forearm, those are contracting a little bit, which is pulling the palm of my hand back toward my body. So that's what's called wrist flexion. And that's what's happening as we're coming through impact. And again, we've got to get these hips open to allow us to get in that position to just simply roll the ball across the ground. So once you're comfortable with just the left arm only, it's going to be difficult. We don't want to hit these very far. Those are only going about 25, 30 feet. And again, they're not getting up in the air at all. Now let's go to the right hand. So what's happening in the downswing is my left hand creating some lag here. That left wrist stays nice and flat or a little bit bowed at impact. And then it's gonna release to flat out in front. So we're concentrating on getting that bowed as we're coming through impact. Now the right wrist is a little bit more active. It's gonna release a little bit harder. As we're coming into the downswing, that right wrist is gonna be what feels like it's completely angled back. So again, that would be flexion was happening with my left wrist. This would be bowed. We're going to have that very cupped or extended back. You're going to feel like you pull your knuckles all the way back to your elbow. And we talked about the muscles on the inside of your arm pulling this left wrist into a bowed position. It's going to be the muscles on the outside of your arm that pull your knuckles back towards your elbow. So as I'm coming through contact, if I let my hips open up, now I can get into a position to where I'm going to feel like my right arm's pretty tight. The upper right arm's pretty tight with my chest. Again, my chest is opening up slightly and my right wrist is really angled back as I'm coming through impact. It almost feels like I'm just tossing a ball down the fairway. Now after impact, I can go ahead and let that release. It actually is releasing through impact, but we're exaggerating for this drill. But I'm going to go ahead and roll some on the ground. Again, these aren't going to get airborne at all. I'm just going to roll those across the ground. I hit that one a little bit thin. Let's try one more. And I'm just going ahead and letting my, my club brush the turf. So it's almost like you're putting with your three or four iron. So that one was nice and solid and just scooted right up the fairway. So I'm doing the same thing there with my right arm. I'm feeling like it's going from a flex back position. Notice how my elbow is up this way into letting that go as I'm coming through the shot. But I'm not going to let it add loft as I'm hitting the ball, taking all the loft off the club face. So once I've done each of those arms individually, again, 20, 30 reps with each one, I'm starting to get a feeling for where I would be at contact if I really want to de-loft this a lot. So for those of you guys that are casting or flipping early, this is going to feel very different than what you're used to. Now from here, I'm going to put both hands on there. And the key is, in my normal swing, if I'm casting, look at it from this direction, my right wrist is firing early. So this wrist is going flat, and that is what's casting and pushing this club out. I'm feeling like I'm really hammering on it with my hands quite a bit. So when I put both hands on here, what I really want to focus on, again, is keeping that right hand back, almost like the palm of my hand is toward the ground, and I'm going to feel like I'm just kind of tossing that ball down the fairway, taking a lot of loft off this club. Now again, 
The mistake I, I see here, let's go from a four iron to about a seven iron. The mistake I see is everybody wants to go all out full on speed and hit their seven iron 190 yards, not, not literally, but that's the idea. We're gonna crush this seven iron and we wanna go to all out speed without getting the motion and grain first. What I want you to do, let's get both hands on the club now and let's chip some shots. Now I'm gonna go from about 25 feet rolling them. I'm gonna go about 50 or 60 yards and I'm gonna to try to take all the loft off this seven iron just like I did with my four iron. So my, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm gonna roll it on the ground. In reality, it's probably gonna get a good 10 or 15 feet off the ground. That was about, yeah, 10, 15 feet. And I carried that one about 60, 70 yards. So I'm trying to see just how close to the ground I can get this ball flight to be. I'm taking all the loft off the club. And again, I gotta get my body, my hips, my torso has to open up. My left arm is across my chest, so it's gonna look like it's square, but I have to get that to open up so I can keep that club de-lofted on through there. If my body slows down and stops, my hands are gonna flip past my body. I gotta keep that body rotating through the shot. I'm not trying to get a lot of speed from my hips, but I do have to keep them moving. So let me go ahead and hit another one here, and I'm gonna see if I can get it even lower than the last one. There we go, so that's just a little punch shot. Those are only getting about 10 feet off the ground with a seven iron, and those are flying a good 60 yards. Now, the last thing here that I want you to pay attention to is look at the divots that I'm taking. I'm not chopping down into the ground. Sometimes I see people trying to de-loft the club, and instead of actually de-lofting the club with their hands and wrist and taking some loft off there, what they're doing is they just try to hit down into the ball more. So they'll put the ball back in their stance, they'll get a lot of forward shaffling, they'll just chop down into the golf ball. We don't want to do that because we're not going to get a lot of compression on the ball. Even though we're, we're hitting it low, we're kind of cheating to do that. We're not using the hands and arms and the club effectively to get lag and then release that lag to get speed. We're just cheating and putting it back in our stance. So I want this ball to be up kind of off my left ear, the logo of my shirt, where it would be normally uh, with an iron shot. So it's just in front of center of my stance. And I'm still going to hit this 10 feet off the ground, coming in nice and shallow and taking a good, clean, small divot. I don't want to put it back and I don't want to chop down on it. I want to be using my, my arms properly, this lag and forward shaffling properly to get the, the loft off the club. So finally, let's, we're going to hit 20 or 30, hitting about 10 feet off the ground, 50 or 60 yard shots. And then we're gradually going to go a little bit faster and faster. So on this one, I'll go ahead and hit one more. Let's actually show it in slow motion and then we'll be able to see that full swing and you're going to see it impact. I got a lot of forward shaft lean and I'm going to flight that ball down. So we'll see just how low I can hit it with a full swing. All right, so I hope you all really enjoyed this video. If you did, I got an awesome bonus for you. Now, one of the most important things we can do in golf, and let's face it, we all want to crank the ball. We want to hit it hard with a lot of power. That's probably the number one thing to improving your golf game that I found. And the best thing to do to improve your speed, your power, is to get a lot more lag in the downswing. So I got a great bonus for you. One of the number one mistakes that I see people make that is really killing their lag. I'm going to play a preview of that video if you want to watch the full thing, all you have to do, if you're on a desktop device, you're on a, on a computer, go ahead and click the link that pops up on your screen. That'll get you instant, instant access to that full video, plus five videos, five bonus videos from our Top Speed Golf system. It's going to walk you through the entire system. And then if you're on a mobile device, a tablet, you're going to go ahead and click on the iCard that's somewhere on the screen right now. Go ahead and click that iCard, click that link. It's going to get you instant access, and I'll see you all in the lag video. Hi guys and welcome back. I'm Clay Ballard and in today's video we're going to talk about one of the absolute worst drills for creating lag. It's a very common drill that I see. And in this drill what we're going to do is we're going to set the wrist very early to create an angle of lag and then we're going to try to hold this throughout the swing. It's one of the worst things that you can, that you can do to build lag. I'm going to talk about the science behind why this is the case and I'm also going to give you a great drill to help you improve your lag all in this video. Let's go ahead and get if started. I do it this way versus holding that position. Exact same thing happens when we're building lag in the golf swing. So what we want to do is throughout the swing, I want to have a very low and wide takeaway. So I'm not going to set my wrist early at all. If you look at a lot of the top players, you look at uh, Adam Scott, very wide takeaway, not very much wrist set at all. You look at Roy McIlroy, look at Tiger Woods. All these players are using a wide takeaway and not getting very much wrist set so that later in the swing, as we start down, 
we can increase this wrist set and we're really only going to max out this angle of lag for a split second in the downswing. Okay, so a three-step drill here. Now, as we get started with this, I want to remind you that the fulcrum in this golf club for getting a massive amount of lag is right at the end of the golf club. This is where I want my hinge point to be.